What's up everybody, Greg Treziak here with Pragmatic Works, bringing you the top three underutilized visuals in Power BI. What I wanna get into here today is three visuals, plus if you stick around to the end, a bonus, that really are not used as much as they should be when we build our reports. Before we get started, want to learn more about Power BI for Finance or Universal Design? Visit prag.work slash greg40 and you'll save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription. And you're going to get access to over 100 courses. Now, on to the video. I've just got a base report here. First of all, if you're not already subscribed to our on-demand learning, use greg40. Check that out. It'll give you an awesome huge, huge access to our full library of classes. So if you're enjoying YouTube content like this, make sure you're grabbing it on our on-demand learning as well. Okay, so first underutilized visualization, that's gonna be our ribbon chart. Now I know, I know what you're saying. A lot of people think of ribbon chart and they say, no way, that looks like it's from the 70s. I'm not gonna use it, get it out of my face. Greg, you're crazy, stop it. But really, if you think about it, this is another way to enhance what we're doing in our reporting. Just give it a little bit of something extra. I wanna show you how this could work. Let's just imagine here, I've got this just basic chart right here. This is a stacked bar chart, I'm pulling that in, and I decide to change it up and go right here to my ribbon chart and just give it something a little different. Now, this certainly is a different way of utilizing a visualization but it's just different enough that it brings to the fold something a little bit more intriguing to the eye. It's a little bit more balanced. It does have that flow, so we aren't gonna see the levels as well as we could in a traditional chart there, and it has actually changed our orientation a bit, but it does give us a nice and interesting perspective. Another thing to think about here, you can always still utilize things like the legend and small multiples even in visualizations like this, to just enhance your game a little bit. I think it's underutilized, it's funky, it's fresh. That's just one that you definitely should take into consideration. Okay, next one here, and I'm gonna look at this top right visualization, which is just a traditional stacked column chart. So instead of utilizing a stacked column chart, Maybe we change it up a little bit, and if the data allows, let's go ahead and use an area chart. Area charts don't get a lot of hype, but I think they do a pretty good job of displaying differences over those months here. This is failed bank data. It's just looking at each month, what is the difference? Now here's my caveat. I think they're cool, they're nice to bring in, and they're a little bit different to bring some variation into your reporting. But I would advise, here's my warning, flash the warning here. We need to make sure we're adding data labels because data labels actually make those specific points readable. So I highly suggest adding data labels to area charts so your users can see what is actually that data point that was hit. How many failed banks did we actually have in the month of January, February, et cetera. If you don't know how to add those data labels, relatively easy. All you need to do is make sure you've selected your visual so you have anchor points across all of your corners and the midpoints. You're gonna click on this button right here which is format your visual. I kinda call this the Bob Ross button because it's got that old timey paintbrush. So if I click on this here, I'm gonna notice right here at the bottom, I've got data labels. I can turn that on or off. Watch what happens when I turn that off. See what I mean here about making sure if you're gonna use that area chart, mix it up a little bit, you're turning on data labels. This is very hard to read without, so it's definitely something I suggest for you. Okay, next one here. Take a peek at this matrix visualization we have. It's got state. If I open up the matrix, it's got city. If it goes down a notch, it goes into our smaller level at the bottom. This is an awesome set of data. If you've never had the opportunity to attend our dashboard in a day class here at Pragmatic Works, definitely sign up and check that out because we go into this data, we make it really pop like this and even more. So you're probably thinking, Greg, I've seen a matrix before. I get it. What else can I add here? 
probably one of the biggest underutilized features that does play into visualizations, like a table, like a matrix, we see those so often, is actually sparklines. Now, sparklines was a pretty new and interesting feature, was in preview for a bit, but it's fully here and it's really going to bring your matrixes and tables to life. How do we actually embed it? Well, for me, probably the easiest way is click on that visualization, but we're not gonna be in format your visual, we're actually gonna be on add data to your visual. And we're gonna go down all the way to our values. And on our values, there's gonna be this chevron right here. It's a little bit of a drop down. And if I hit up this drop down, what I'm gonna see is a couple of things. I can remove, move, conditional formatting, but what I want right here is add a sparkline. So I'm gonna select this sparkline, and this is gonna let me write pretty much a change over time visualization, basically a simple line chart to add to my table or matrix. So let's say on the y-axis I have total banks, which is my count of failed banks essentially here. And then I'm on the x-axis, I'm actually gonna look at this over my calendar year. So what I'm saying here is over the year, for each row, show me out of all my years, how many bank failures we have. And this is where it's gonna get super, super awesome. I'm gonna press create and wow, look at that. Right there in my matrix visualization, I have a change over time visualization, but it's affected by the row context here. So Georgia, we can see the spike just for Georgia over the span of my years in my data. I've got that for Florida, Illinois, et cetera, et cetera. If I expand on this and I drill down into my hierarchy that's in my matrix, I skip the exact same effect. I could see Phoenix, the changes. If you're wondering about this data, great. Why is there that big spike there? Uh, great Recession, 2008, 2009, 2010, and even a little bit from there, big spike in bank failures. We actually get to see that change over time right here in our visualization. We can add multiple spark lines. It's just a really awesome feature to include. Okay, you've sticked around to the end of the video. That means you are gonna get the bonus underutilized visualization. And my friends, that is metrics. I cannot tell you how many people I see that I tell them about metrics and how I use it nearly every day. And they go, what do you mean, what's metrics? So I'm gonna make a little bit of room here on this report. I'm gonna take this visualization, our ribbon chart, make it a bit smaller. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate over to the trophy. You're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be a, a champion with this one here. So if I add in the trophy visualization, what you're gonna see is the ability for me here to track metrics in my report. Here is where I'm gonna need to add metrics. So what I'm gonna do is select add metrics. I'll go ahead and select. And what this is gonna show me is a way to add metrics to the report. Now I can make these a list or an actual visualization. So you have an option here. Now what metrics are, are simply a goal that you can define and track throughout your report. My favorite feature, and I'll show you in a second, is you actually can plug this into the Power BI service and collaborate on these metrics. That's where it gets really, really interesting. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna say, hey, add this metrics as a visual and I'm gonna create a new one. And I'm gonna give my metric a name. I'm gonna say that this is a failed bank alert. And I can enter in a current value or I can connect to my data. If I connect to my data, I can select a report or app right here if I need to. But for today, I'm just gonna add one, create a new one, and I'm gonna say, hey, my current value is 567, and my final target is, all right, it will be a warning if we get to 575. Here I can define a start date and end date. Who owns this? So if I wanna send this to Angelica, I can send this over to Angelica, and you know what? Why not Yasmini as well? I can send this over to Yasmini, and I can say, hey, we're actually starting this right here. And then 
I'll again give it that quick name here, alert fail banks, and I'll add it to my report. There you go. So now I'll make it a little bit bigger. We actually can see my alert set up. It is my metric. It could be a goal, a sales goal. You can see who's assigned to that goal. And on the Power BI service, we actually can check in and tell people what is going on in that status. We can give it some qualitative feedback. So to actually see this, I'm going to take you over to the Power BI service for a minute. Now we're in the Power BI service. So in the Power BI service here, you can see all my metrics. Some of them are actually tied to true data. Some are actually static ones that I've created. So as you can see here, I'm going to go to this team goals for 2023. And in here, as I select this, there is a few things to look at. So these are my goals and metrics. And right here, I've got one I made called yearly sales. I've got a failed banks one as well. And I can go to yearly sales just as an example. I can open this up and I actually can see the details of my yearly sales. Over time, what's happened? Are we there? What's the month over month? What's the history? Have I checked in? What's the full time period? I even have status report check-ins. We were behind, we were at risk, we're on track. I can give some reasoning. We're almost there, we're on the way. And I can even set up more alerts and even connect to Power Automate here. Long story short, this is the ultimate way to collaborate on goals right in your report. You can connect, you can share comments, you can put if you're behind or on track, it just put a little bit more of that human meaning element to your data. Well, how about it? That has been three underutilized Power BI visualizations and a bonus if you stuck around, honestly, to me, maybe the bonus is probably the best out of these. Those are underutilized visualizations. I can't wait to see what you use those for in your report. Hey, share it. Let's see it. How did you change up your visualization game with these underutilized visualizations? All right, y'all, this has been Greg with Pragmatic Works. Remember, stay pragmatic.